Today we're making a table entirely out of epoxy. This is going into my kitchen and I wanted light to go through the table so I could grow plants underneath it. Now for now I have ivy in here, but I'm gonna switch these out with some herbs later this season. Oh, and before I forget, this video is sponsored by Established Title. More on that later too. To make the molds for this project, I'm gonna make MDF prototypes of each piece first. This is nice because it lets me see how the pieces are going together with a cheap material before mixing and pouring all that expensive epoxy. I cut the pieces out using my X-Carve Pro by Inventables. I drew the designs on Illustrator, and I'll go over that process at the end of the video. If you don't have access to a CNC, look for the link in the description where I show how I made a similar table using just a jigsaw. For the silicone molds, I'm gonna need an outer rim. So I use my jigsaw to not just cut the tabs to remove the leg pieces, but to also cut the perimeter around them. Both the silicone and the epoxy are expensive materials, so most of the thought is going into making sturdy, reusable molds that are materially efficient. The legs are gonna be about an inch and a half by an inch and a half and are comprised of two layers of three quarter inch MDF. I rounded over the edges with my palm router because epoxy corners can be quite sharp. The smoother I get the MDF, the less sanding of epoxy I'll have to do. So I typically sand to about 220 grit, then apply a clear coat, in this case, Minwax Polycrylic, do a light sanding with 320 or 400 grit in between coats and typically get it smooth enough in two to three coats. To make the silicone molds, I screwed the MDF prototype to a piece of melamine. To conserve silicone, I took the scrap pieces that the CNC left over and used those to fill in the voids. I hot glued down the outer perimeter, and for this I just added an extra piece of MDF so that this outer perimeter would be taller than the prototype itself. I mixed up some Mold Star 30 by Smooth On and poured it right in. This is a tough, durable, reusable mold material, and I think the quarter inch thick walls should be sturdy enough on their own, but just to be on the safe side, I saved the inner pieces and the outer perimeter in sections. That way I can stabilize the molds if the weight of the epoxy pushes the side walls out too much. The silicone really doesn't stick to these materials, but there is an airtight connection and the suction of it can make it quite difficult to pull off. I also put screws in on the wrong side on the inner fill pieces, so I had to cut mostly through the melamine and then chip it off to remove the pieces. It wasn't hard to do, it just took a little longer than it should have. I rinsed off the silicone and was ready to do the first epoxy pour. I'm using Thick Set Fathom by Total Boat. I really like this, it takes a long time to cure, but I don't have to do multiple pours. One and done, and I'm good. I wanted to see if quarter inch thick silicone walls were going to be rigid enough for this one and a half inch deep pour. So for this first pour, I didn't add any perimeter supports or the middle inserts. For the second and third legs, I did use the middle inserts, and when I compared the epoxy pieces, I didn't see that much of a difference. The tabletop is made of three layers of MDF. There's the top flat surface, a support level in the middle, and then this Y-shaped piece that will just give me a little more height for the socket that's gonna go around the legs. I am trying to be pretty clean with the glue. And luckily, this piece isn't gonna be under any severe structural loading, so I can err on the side of glue minimalism. It's just that if the glue squeezed out, that would be a lot of scraping and then corner sanding, which isn't that fun. Once again, I'm gonna use fill pieces to reduce the amount of silicone needed. But this time I went a little thicker than a quarter inch just because there's three of these big pieces and I wasn't sure I could get them perfectly aligned with consistent quarter inch spacing. I use hot glue and silicone to secure and seal the mold to a big piece of melamine. Even though MDF is heavy, these filler pieces will float up when I pour the silicone in. So I did have to secure them with screws to the outer perimeter mold. I ended up using about $600 worth of silicone, which is pretty expensive, but I should be able to make a couple hundred tables out of this one set of molds. The insert pieces weren't that important for the leg mold, but for the tabletop, they are. And that's because the weight of the epoxy will be going directly down, and there needs to be some support under these cavities that I placed to reduce the amount of silicone needed. I used a scrap 2x4 to get some leverage and screwed that down to the inserts, but the screws between the two layers pulled right out, so I did have to like use the drill and the chisel and just kind of dig them out a little bit, and they ended up looking like some sort of rodent chewed on the corners. But I don't need that much stability, I just need enough to keep the mold from compressing down and I was pretty confident that this would be fine. And spoiler alert, it was. Now I wish I could tell you that I perfectly calculated the amount of epoxy I would need to fill this strange shaped volume. If I was using 3D modeling software, wouldn't be that hard, but since I drew an illustrator, I guessed, but I guessed right. 
it's important to keep the molds perfectly flat while the silicone cures. And while it cures, let's hear a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Established Titles. Now, speaking of titles, I've had quite a few over the years. Designer, entrepreneur, even I think one time, one of Boston's most eligible bachelors. But uh, now I have a new one that's super official, and it is, dun da 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 Lord Ben, I even got a proclamation. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies in English. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so that they can call themselves a lord or lady. It's just a really good way to flex on your enemies. So in addition to flattering your vanity in a fun and novel way, you can help preserve a picturesque woodland, the biodiversity of Scotland, while supporting global forestation efforts. The title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official search certificate with a crest. I am getting one for my sister Jessie so she can officially be the Lady of Squirrels. The certificates feature a unique plot number so that you can see the exact location of your land. So established titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using the link right down there in the description will be placed near the my plot of land, which is awesome. We can be neighbors and build a little kingdom. This makes a great last minute gift and established titles is running a sale. So if you use the code homemade modern, you'll get 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com slash homemade modern to get your gifts and uh, help support this channel. All right, back to the build. I let them cure for about eight days. Removing the epoxy from the silicone is way easier than the MDF prototypes. Because once I remove the filler pieces in the back, which already have little chewed away handles, the silicone has a lot more flex in it and just peels right away from the epoxy. I sanded all the pieces with 220 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander, wiped away all the dust, and was ready to assemble. I mixed up another batch of epoxy and poured them into the sockets on the underside of the table. Then I just place the legs right in. Epoxy is a great glue for epoxy. And with the leg design, I create these little hooks and nooks so that this glue layer would bond the two pieces together. The middle support is important to add rigidity to this three-legged table. And I could have used clamps here, but instead I just put in three screws temporarily so that once the glue epoxy cured, I could flip the whole thing over without the legs wobbling. Now I can seal up the cracks between the legs and the center support with some clear silicone so I can pour a glue layer into the cavity in the center support that will bond it to the legs. After scraping away the silicone that sealed in that last glue layer, I got out my orbital sander, my Ryobi vacuum box, threw on my space helmet, and sanded the whole thing with 320 grit paper. From there, I switched to my Ryobi polisher. This is a fantastic tool for epoxy projects. It has these big sponges, and you can just use polishing compounds of different grits and get the exact finish that you want. In this case, I'm going for sort of a soft sea glass matte finish. The tabletop is just under half an inch thick in its thinnest portions, but it's almost two inches thick around the legs. I really like this aesthetic of mixing something that's space age and futuristic looking like the epoxy with real plants. It's like futuristic without the dystopian stuff. I have heard from some maker friends though that large epoxy tabletops can droop over time, particularly if they get too warm, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. If that was a problem though, I would probably just intentionally heat it up, flatten it out, and then laminate a layer of fiberglass onto the top to create some tensile strength. But let's head over to the desk and I'll talk a little bit about the Illustrator files that I created that allowed me to cut out the CNC pieces. I draw most of my CNC projects in Illustrator and I just set up a file that's full size. I like drawing one to one. I use grid snaps and just lay out some simple lines and then I can just drag them point to point. And once I get a rough sketch of what I want, I then use offset path to add some thickness and make it a little bit more real. I then turn off grid snaps, trace over these messy lines, join the pieces together, and then export them as DXFs that I import into Easel. I separate out the layers in Easel, set the depth, add some tabs, and I'm ready to cut them out. I use a quarter inch router bit, which is kind of perfect because that's exactly how thick I want the walls for the silicone molds to be. So the table's nice and sturdy. The plants are doing well so far. I'm going to make a chandelier for this later. I'm going to put a grow light in there along with the regular lights as well. And that way at night I can just turn on the grow light and keep these plants thriving. Now, this is ivy. I think I'm going to switch this out for basil and cilantro and things like that. So you can just clip some herbs and put them right on top of your food. But uh, it's the fall right now. And the last time I went to the home and garden center, they didn't have any uh, herb plants. So we'll experiment with the ivy for now. I also think it'll look cool if they kind of the vines sort of weave their way through the legs. 
The other thing that I'm thinking too is I really like this kind of industrial futuristic, just plain epoxy with the kind of uh, frosted finish. But I have been wanting to experiment with some pigments. So I'm thinking I might try to tint some epoxy and do a glaze over this and maybe tint it a color. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below what color I should go with. All right, thanks. Bye.